Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today you'll be doing the first of my Man Booker International reviews. And the first book I read was Death by Water by Kenzaburo Oi. So this book is fairly epic in its scope and I think it's going to be a little bit challenging to try and sum it up for you quite concisely, but I'll do the best I can. Um, so the main character is uh, an ageing Japanese novelist who's written a number of novels throughout his life um, and he had quite recently been awarded a major literary award um, that they just call the Major International Literary Award. Um, and he is sort of struggling to write what is going to be most likely his final novel. So his father drowned when he was relatively young. Um, he went off in a boat and the boat sank and he died in the storm. And really the novelist is seeking to write this book and has been doing for the whole of his career. Um, and all of his other novels are tied into writing this final um, sort of obituary really for his father and for what he thought about his father. That sort of sets the scene for the book but there is an awful lot more going on than that. Um, he has sort of familial conflict um, with his sister and his mother about the way that he's trying to write about his father, um, about the sort of family secrets that maybe haven't been explored. There's also a completely different storyline about a young woman called Aneko um, who is a young woman who is making um, these sort of plays uh, based on the major literary works of Japanese writers um, and she's basically like a big sort of fan of his work. Um, and she's trying to aim to recreate his novels in a theatrical form um, and she plays quite a large role as well. There's also the character of Akaro who plays quite heavily who is um, the author's son um, and he has uh, learning disabilities, he has issues um, with his mental development and even though he's in his 40s he's still quite reliant on his mother and father for a lot of care uh, so there's sort of you know, bits of conflict there in terms of that relationship between father and son when the bond has sort of stayed the same since childhood. There's a fair amount going on is what I'm trying to say um, and it is a fairly complex and quite dense novel. Um, there are certain sort of motifs that are played with throughout the book. Um, so there's an element of this odd sort of child spirit called Kuji. Uh, so that the, the author's first name is Kogito, um, but so Koji or Kuji is um, his personification of himself when he was a child. So he's sort of a benevolent sort of um, presence, almost imaginary friend um, who's carried around and so a lot of the characters play with that idea of that child self and that duality of self um, and the way in which we sort of perceive ourselves as external from our actions from time to time. There's also a really heavy play on um, a phrase called going up to the forest. Um, so in the particular sort of folklore of this time, going to the forest means to, to go and meet your end. And um, there's a lot of sort of conversation around what it means to prepare to go to the forest. So to be pre preparing for your own death, preparing for the end of your life um, and how you really can do that um, and what, what sort of state you're leaving not only your own life in, but the work you've left in. So beyond all of that surface level story, which as you can tell really is quite dense, um, the novel is also playing with the ideas of the social aspects of Japanese culture um, and playing with Japanese history. So there's a lot going on. Um, it was the winner of the Nobel Prize. You can kind of tell why. Um, it, it's quite extraordinary. It, it is so dense and it is so packed with meaning. So it is over 400 pages long, but it actually feels longer than that because of how much is packed in here. I think it's a really interesting book. It's a really interesting book to read as a Westerner um, because certain aspects of the book felt quite strange to me um, because I'm not used to them. So the first sort of aspect would be that emotions are, are played and are uh, communicated in a completely different way to the way we see in Western fiction, uh, which I found fascinating. And I think the other thing that was particularly different to me was that because I don't have the backing in this Japanese culture, there were certain things I missed. Um, so one, of, there's a scene in, this, in the middle where this playwright is acting out um, another famous work, uh, and it's described in quite a lot of detail. And for me, it just sort of felt quite flat because I've never read the original piece. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't actually think it's translated into English. So I don't think I could have read the piece um, had I wanted to. But for a Japanese audience, it would be a very familiar story and a very popular story. Um, so really interesting. I think this book is very good. Um, I think in terms of its literary merits, yeah, it's going to rank really quite highly. Um, in terms of the enjoyability of the of the book is just purely from a sort of a reader's point of view, um, I give it three out of five stars. Uh, I, I did find, you know, the literary side of it really interesting and, and the storyline interesting. Um, but I think it was potentially a little bit slow paced at times, which may have been just due to the difference in, in the way that Western writers um, sort of portray stories and the way that Japanese writers portray stories, um, but interesting nevertheless. I think it's also really clear that this book is quite highly autobiographical um, and the life of, of uh, Kogito really quite closely mirrors Kensaburo. Um, 
And I think as well, for those who have read his other work, this is probably going to be even more important to them. Because he, this is the first one of his I've read, um, potentially again I missed out in that aspect, um, because this is likely to be Kenzaburo Oi's last novel, um, and, and therefore his kind of testament too. Um, it's a lot of different things, is what I would say about this book as a sort of summary. It covers an awful lot of ground. Um, I think it is very good um, in terms of enjoyability without any kind of context, without having um, the sort of... I suppose, prompts of Japanese culture, of understanding a little bit more about his work. I don't feel as though I managed to enjoy it fully, but I'm definitely glad I read it and really looking forward to potentially exploring more of his work in future. I really hope that's been of use to you. I hope it's given it you a sort of overview of what the book's about without giving anything away. I purposefully haven't focused on plot points, I've focused on other aspects of the novel because I know that you know a few people might be looking to this to see whether or not it's worth reading um, rather than just wanting a sort of splurge of, of feelings about the book. Um, so let me know. If this has intrigued you and, and made you interested in picking up the book, let me know. If it has dissuaded you and, and you just think it's not your kind of thing, it might be a bit too dense, um, then tell me too. I always like to know what your comments and feedback is. So the next one I'm going to be jumping into is the Vegetarian by Han Khan. Um, I've already started that one and that will be my next review video. Might even be able to do it for you tomorrow but we will see how I got on with it today. Hope you're having a lovely day and I will talk to you again soon. Bye bye.